Good stuff. How's it going everybody? I'm at Kyle's house right now. This is Leo Potzel TV, Reef Tank Addiction, Season 2, Episode 1. And I'm super excited to be featuring this gorgeous 410 gallon saltwater coral reef fish tank. Kyle, thank you so much for having me here today. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself so we can literally jump in this tank and start learning as much as we can about it. Yeah, um, my name's Kyle. I've been in the hobby for about six years, and other than that, I started out with a 29 gallon bio cube, and it just kind of snowballed into this thing. Talking about testing, what are some things that you do test? Um, I test everything still. I even test ammonia every once in a while. Is I know right? I know some people with larger tanks that they don't test ammonia anymore, and they've had crashes from ammonia buildup. So it's actually known to happen, just, just something you don't notice. So ammonia, I probably do once every three months, if that. Okay. And uh, everything else, like alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, and all that, probably once every two weeks. I mean, really, the maintenance schedule on this tank is once every two weeks. Once every two weeks, yeah. like you said, you do that 25-gallon water Yeah, change. and then I pretty much, I, you know, clean everything, make sure everything's working properly. Even cleaning the front glass, I don't have much algae growth on it, so mm -hmm. I only do that once a week. Mm -hmm. um, past that, I don't really do much to it, to be honest with you. What it are, auto feeds. I feed, auto? I, yeah, I mean, I feed it uh, PE mysis, but I do that randomly as well. So pretty much it just sits there and works right now. What about testing for calcium and uh, like mag? Magnesium? Yeah, yeah, I do all that. I, I, yeah, I use uh, Red Sea test kits. They okay. seem to work okay or well enough. Again, I'm getting more and more into SPS. I'm testing it. I'm making sure everything's cool. Yep. As I go down that road, I will probably test more and probably use different test kits and you know test it a lot more and go down that whole road. So we'll, we'll try that. We'll get in there at some point. I'm slowly but surely doing the SPS thing. So I want to know uh, food. What are you feeding your fish? What are you feeding your coral? How often? Stuff like that. Corals, they don't feed. Corals you don't yeah, feed? Yeah, absolutely not. I've never fed so a coral. So how are they growing and just being the way they Well, every coral in here is photosynthetic minus the gorgonians. And the gorgonians I'm supposed to feed every day, but I refuse to do that and they're growing. So every coral in here besides a gorgonian is photosynthetic. photosynthetic yeah, correct. Which basically means that it grows off the light. Yep. And I guess just water parameters being in the right yeah. in check, right? Yeah, exactly. So fish then. What are you feeding your fish? I feed my fish exclusively PE mysis. Okay. And uh, a mix of the Neptune systems food that I'm changing out of that and using cobalt flake food. I noticed that the jawfish and even the more chidal, they don't like uh, pellet life food, they like flake food. Yeah. So I'll just switch over to that and that makes it a lot easier. So you were saying, uh, what what other uh, flake food do you use? I use uh, Cobalt Aquatics, their flake food right now, and then I feed uh, reef roids to this Gorgonian. The reef roids, eh? Yeah, and uh, that's about it. Wow. Other than that... How often do you, do you feed the fish then? Do you... Uh... The, the Fish get fed three times a day through the auto fish feeder. Okay. I randomly feed them frozen food. However, like on the weekend, I'll feed them probably three times just to see, you know, them do something. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, the reef roids I feed probably once a week, maybe twice a week if the coral is lucky. Um, yeah. Other than that, I don't really do much. So this it's just this one gargodian here that actually. Yeah. Uh, needs the reef roids. Yeah. So are you like spot feeding it? Or yeah, I just, just turn off feed it. turn off the wave makers oh, or anything? No, I turn never, off any flow? I don't turn off any flow. Just leave it the way it is. Exactly. Everyone filter socks. I don't... I mean, again, the amount of food that's going in this tank, the tank can handle it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, these fish, I mean, they will eat an insane amount of food. The two nasos and the orange shoulder, they'll eat through like seven or eight sheets of nori in one day <laughs> yes, without, right. without any issue. So, no way. I mean, I could dump probably 50 cubes in this tank and it will all be eaten and gone. Even the jawfish eat tons, so. Interesting. It's just a never ending cycle. This is a gorgeous clown here. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, That's it's, a, a, it's a, uh, I forget the company it's from. It's uh, just a naked clown, but it has two spots. I found them uh, 
just found them in a store one day and had to have them. And then I have an all black midnight clown, and he's two years old. Yeah, but he he's wants, solid black. I saw this guy too. Yeah, Can you check him out. He likes to hang out here in this anemone. Yep. Or? So I'm still pairing different clownfish. There'll be two more clownfish added, at least maybe four more. Again, I'm just restocking fish now, and I'm also not even done doing the coral yet. But it's getting there. So it's not fully stocked. Oh, still not even close. No, not for what well, I. Well, you want. do have lots of room and. Yep. A variety of different type of fish and coral that are looking amazing and are doing well so I'm sure you won't have any problems slowly uh, adding new corals to the tank and new fish yeah it's extremely slow now I go a lot slower than I used to if you have an issue I just slowed right down yeah yeah because when I first again when I first got this tank up and running I was really excited I just you know insta filled with fish and, and which it's is like nah. very normal and common yeah, for people to do it right? absolutely does not work in my case at all so that being said I have to ask what for someone starting like new in the hobby or even a pro in the hobby like okay, hold on let's start off with someone new getting into the hobby what would you recommend someone new getting into the hobby like best like couple of pieces of advice like what would you say uh, a lot of reading a lot of reading research online oh yeah online any yeah. any recommended places that you think that are no, probably all the forums all the all major forums yeah. out there I would just start reading yeah. um, asking and then, questions yeah right? definitely ask questions most of the forums are pretty nice and they'll answer questions and yeah. you know just you know simply start um, they always say the larger you go the easier it is but mm -hmm. I mean now with the technology and all that stuff if you want to start off with a nano I, that's fine seems okay to me okay seems easier to take care of anyways and um, I know a common question people like to ask on uh, like my Facebook group and just online and whatnot is do you start with a sump do you start with the hang on the back filter like what which direction would you lead someone like no, it literally matters, well it matters all on budget right? budget right that's all it comes out how much you want to put into the hobby and mm -hmm. what do you want out can you run a successful reef as an all-in-one yeah I'm doing it right now and I can do it on a really large scale can you run a successful reef with a hang on the back filter yeah of course you can you don't need to have a sump there's, right you know it's nice to have one to put all your stuff in but nowadays there's hang on the back skimmers refugiums and all this other stuff that you can get of course you can run it uh, some just usually makes it look nicer and adds water volume water volume exactly what about just in general taking it slow in the yeah. hobby hey? yeah yeah that's another thing just take it slow take it yeah very it's just hard to speed up this hobby it really is. and like you said you rush things a little bit or yeah. whatever and then you kind of ran into some yeah. issues right but you turn the page and you're back in action here yep yeah. And uh, you're and showing us. In this hobby, usually it ends bad. Some people can do it and get away with it, but usually it ends really bad. Now. One uh, another question I wanted to ask you. Some uh, I noticed some other people use. Uh, what's that? The Kickstarter kind of chemical for like a new tank. Yeah. Have you ever used it, or do you recommend using, or um, what's your opinion on it? Yeah, I don't really have an opinion on the bottled stuff that you can put in your tank because I usually don't ever use it. You never really used it? Just no, I mean, does it does naturally. Help, probably. Yeah. I mean, well, but you just, it's, like it's you better than nothing, right? right. Yes. Yeah, I mean, would I use it? Yes, of course I would. Okay. I wouldn't mind using that. I mean, it's, it's better than nothing and it, it doing something usually to your tank, especially right. from a respectable company. Right. Just doing something. To basically kickstart your yeah. tank off, right? Yeah, I mean, if you watch on, on Animal Planet, there's the, uh, whatchamacallit show. I mean, they kick off start most of their tanks. Good. their stuff yeah I mean all their fish can't be dying or they would have no clients so exactly I mean it obviously works to some degree there you go thinking about your Very tank yeah that. even yeah. when you're sleeping maintaining your levels keeping them from peaking yeah. beginner or pro yeah happy reefing it's in our blood it's like we're bleeding you won't even believe me the things that we keep it do it yourself projects yeah you know you love it always keep